what are the white supremacists doing now? They are doing four basic things. Racial showcasing, racial population tailoring, racial dislocation, and white sacrificing. And these four things are designed to produce maximum sophisticated confusion among the victims. And so far has been somewhat successful worldwide. Now I'll start with the first one. What is racial showcasing? That means taking huge numbers of black people and putting them out front. There's going to be more of this all over the planet. Many, many millions of black people that you will see who will be rolling in money. They'll be able to showcase the places where they live. They'll be able to showcase their knowledge and expertise. So you have television now, you have all of the mediums for doing this, for showcasing huge numbers of black people. I will say it, run, it will eventually run into the millions, so many that you won't be able to count them. Now, what is this for? This is for any black person that starts talking about racism in the future is going to be laughed at because they're going to be able to showcase so many black people who are what you call quote-unquote successful that it will seem that racism has been put out of business. But white supremacy is a world business, and like any other business, it works on profits and losses, which means percentages. You go into business, you expect a certain amount of loss. If you're in the grocery business, well, you might have a load of asparagus that is spoiled. But overall, you will make more profits than you have losses if you're going to stay in the business. Now, so the white supremacists know that the cost of doing the business of white supremacy is going up. They can no longer get away with Joe Lewis and Lena Horne like they did years ago. They have to have many, many, many more black people who are going to be showcased. I made up this term just to explain it. You have to make up terms because they won't make them up for you. So now that's, that's the first phase or, or one of the first uh, elements in the maximum confusion. And so that black people won't be able to say, they'll say, well, you know, it must be something wrong with me that I'm down and out and don't have a biscuit to eat because there are so many millions of black people who have so much, so it can't be a race. But see, for the four or five million black people who will be showcased, there will be hundreds of millions worldwide who won't have a biscuit. That's the way the business operates in the future and will be. That's the way it seems to be going according to what? The evidence, according to the logic. The other is racial population tailoring. That's number two, meaning they're going to be killing huge numbers, either directly or indirectly, of non-white people. When I say black people, I mean, you know, non-white. Anybody who's in the non-white category and doing this on an ongoing basis not to try to kill them all, because when you're in the business of racism, you don't kill off the thing that you need in order to keep racism going. Your ego trip, which is what it's really all about. But you do tailor the population so you can keep them controlled. So you'll kill off a few million in the Congo, then you'll, a few years up the road, you'll kill off a few million in Nigeria, and a few years up the road, you'll kill off a few in Mexico, and on and on and on. And you will highly select the places where you do this. You'll have it all computerized, where you kill off huge numbers. Or you have them, even better still, kill off each other, like you do in most of the cities in the northwestern part of, of the world, called the northwestern hemisphere. Having black people gun down each other, you know, non-white people, the brown people gunning down each other, gangs and all that other foolishness. And you kill them off, you know, and you just keep this going and you egg it on. And you put things in place that will see to it that it just keeps going that way. It never stops because that's the mentality of the people. And uh, this is racial population tailoring. In other places where the people are reasonably, uh, reasonably sane, they don't have a tendency to kill off each other. Then you do things like drive the water or poison the rivers, uh, dump toxic waste. It's all kinds of ways to do that racial population tailoring. All right. Then the other, number three, is racial dislocation. Keep them moving. Keep 
people who are forever on the move through eminent domain, urbanization, uh, urban renewal, gentrification, are here again drying up the river. You build a dam 800 miles up and the river seals off the water behind the dam. I mean, the dam is sealed off, uh, the river is sealed off behind the dam. So that means that all the people down in the valley there, they don't get any water. They need water. They depend on the fishing industry. So now they have to come and work for you because there's no more water there, no more fish. And you give them minimum wage and uh, a promise for the future as long as they look up to you. So they are, no, they are completely dependent. But keep them moving. If a black person in the northwestern hemisphere starts getting that second generation house, then you come through and say you got to build a highway. That's the technique. Now these are things that you asked about, about how the white supremacists operate. These are the ways that they operate. The white sacrificing is the fourth. And this is, here again, all four of these things are for maximum sophisticated confusion among the victims. So you're not confused. You're keeping your victims confused. So you have white sacrifices, meaning it's kind of parallel to the racial showcasing. But these these people in this case are white. Like in any army, any military operation, you know you're going to have some losses. So some white people are written off under the system of white supremacy. And a lot of white people are aware of this. They don't like it. But they are told that this is the cost of doing business. Just like a person who goes into the army and knows full well you might get killed. But it goes with the territory of trying to defend your bigger operation. So white sacrifices mean you'll have some white, more and more white people on park benches, more and more white people begging on streets. They will be greatly visible. But what you won't pay attention to, because black people never pay much attention to what white people are doing, we just watch each other. See, they know that. You'll be passing millions of white people who are doing well on any city street. And for the handful of white people who have fallen through the cracks, you might say, sitting in front of the subways or begging in front of these uh, the delicatessen, for the handful that you see doing that, up under the bridge and all like that. It will give the illusion that it's not about race, that white supremacy is officially out of business. So there will be more of these white sacrifices, and they will be greatly visible. But compared, compared to the number of white people 